In November last year, the federal government flagged off campaigns for the patronage of made in Nigeria product and services in the southwest region of the country. The flag off was part of activities marking the 13th National Council of Industry, Trade and Investment, a meeting in Ikeda State. At the flag off in the state, the Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment, Adini Adibara, said the campaign was part of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, Strategy and National Economic Sustainability Program of the federal government to reposition the country's economy. Now, over the years, consumers' acceptance of made in Nigerian goods has been low. This has affected the performance of most small business sectors. Is the narrative changing? How do we make our brands top notch? That's our focus on the show for today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Well, let's start with water transportation. Traveling on Lagos Ferry will now attract cash reward. Well, so says the Lagos State Government. This comes as the government announced that its waterways are now safer. The managing director of the Lagos State Ferry Services, otherwise known as Lac Ferry, Abdul Bakladi Balogun, shared this information while speaking with journalists. Take a look. Lagos remains one of the busiest cities in Nigeria. It's home to over 500 active startups with a massive consumer market. Commuting within a state densely populated as Lagos has been Herculean in spite of alternative means such as water transportation. All that is about to change now with a reward system in place. Lag ferry users are now to receive cash rewards when they use the waterways. Anyway, you are in Lagos and you are patronizing Lagos State Ferry Services. Once you spend 5,000 naira worth of money, no matter the trip, if it's one way or two ways or three ways or whatever, your 5,000 naira qualifies you for a full token. And instantly, instantly, you will be entered into a draw that can make you win either 500,000, 1 million, 3 million, 50 million, 100 million. The core values of the initiative is said to create responsive paths to meet the needs of Lagosians. We as government seems to be of the opinion that you need to say thank you back to people that are making it happen. And that's why this reward system is being encouraged. So, if you have uh, the uh, Nalai Nalai, Nalai Nalai, you don't get anything. Oh. You have to be part of it before you know it's not true, not true. As a consumer, you, you use this token and you believe that you, you've used up to 5,000 naira on record. And you expect to, be, to qualify for the, for the draws and the token. So definitely, if you think there's something wishy-washy, you can as well approach us. That is transparency. In an effort to raise the standards for safety measures, the government is set to establish a command and control center to monitor activities on the waterways. The state government as well is about to commission the first of its kind in West Africa, a command and a control center. The whole idea of that command and control center is to be able to effectively monitor all of the activities going on on the waterways in terms of safety, in terms of security, and of course gather data for the government to be able to make informed decisions. And this will also help us be able to respond to emergencies even much quicker. Um, yes, we know there were unfortunate incidents in the recent time, but prior to those two incidents, which were back to back for nine months, we didn't have any incidents on our water, which is the first of its kind. All eyes, especially travelers and waters, are looking forward to the impact of the project. Love Ikuku Oyeduku, Plus TV News. Now that's some cheering news for Lagosians. Improving product quality is integral to market entry and share. 
failure to adhere to international standards for product quality will continue to limit the market acceptability of Nigerian products as it poses the risk of rejection and non-acceptance of the product here at home and abroad. Nigerians need to embrace locally made products to position the country as one of the best quality producers globally and grow the economy. Angela Ayekosi is the co-founder, the confident black woman, and CEO, Black, Blonde, and Brunette. She leads a NAPTEP certified training and research center for hair and wig manufacturing, production, and sales. Well, many thanks for joining us on the show, Angela. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. It is indeed our pleasure. So let's talk about uh, Made in Nigeria brands. Uh, I know you're actually having one done right now. Oh, your yes. Hair, that is. <laughs> okay, but how would you really rate our product so far? Well, I would say uh, Made in Nigeria products is getting a whole lot better from where it used to be. And I would attribute that mostly to the rise of the social media and also the improvement of logistics. So because a lot of people are now able to move their products from one end of Nigeria or to from one end of the country to anywhere, it has created a, a bigger opportunity for Nigerian products to reach more people. Okay, so the, the improvement we've seen so far is as a result of uh, the social media Yes. And of course, and transport logistics, really. But, yes. spe but speaking seriously right now, before now, acceptability has been a bit low. Most people would say uh, when they hear that uh, the goods uh, are made from Abba or somewhere in Lagos <laughs> or Newe or so, like, ah, are you sure those products to be durable or even homegrown uh, solutions providers? They would rather want to get something from maybe South Africa or from the Western countries. How has acceptability been so far? Yes, well, you're right in that regard because, of course, everyone wants, a lot of people want to keep up with the Joneses. So it mm. sounds better to say, I received my product from Italy. But it's funny to know that some of these products we buy abroad are actually made here mm. and sold abroad. And then Nigerians and other people go there to buy it and bring it back in. Why waste all that time and money? Because, because the local manufacturers haven't learned so much on how to brand their products mm. so that it could have world-class acceptance. Mm. So what happens is that they produce and sell to you know, bigger brands who now rebrand and repackage those products and sell it to... Why can't we have those bigger brands here in the country? Oh, yes, we can. We can or, have or do, them. Don't we even have them? We should. We have some of them, but also we would need the technical expertise to train our local people. Like in Aba, for instance, mm -hmm. a lot of products are made every day. You'll be shocked at the thousands of clothes, bags, outfits, fashion items, even products that are being churned out from those factories. But because they lack that, that branding, that finishing, that you know, internationally acceptable look mm. of products, it doesn't really scale so much. It doesn't go that far. So why should they lack all of that? Is it uh, a thing that uh, is so hard to come by or so far-fetched or what exactly? Okay, so it's, it's, uh, it's majorly because of the attitude of these people. Most of them are just interested in producing products that will just fly off the shelf. They are not interested in taking time to mm. do that due diligence to say, okay, I want my specifications to be exactly like this. I want it to look like this. I want it to, fin to be finished in a particular way. So since that is not an area of interest, they just do what they think is right. And since people are already buying it anyway, they go with it. So it has to do with the thinking of the people playing in that space. The minute there is, a, there is an urge, the, the minute there is a zeal to want to produce internationally acclaimed and internationally recognized products that can sell anywhere in the world, you'll find out that the products will become better. Fine, so that brings us to the issue of standardization, which you have mentioned in passing. You know, because you uh, are involved in fashion stars, specifically, uh, hair and braided wigs. I know there are standards. For instance, uh, if you want maybe a particular lens or maybe color and all that, uh, if you go abroad or maybe outside the country, you can get those specifications and standardization easily. But what do we really have here? And um, how do we begin to move towards um, you know, internationally accepted standards? 
Okay, well, I would say in that regard, the Standards Organization of Nigeria has been doing a lot. There is a standard for almost any kind of product right now in Nigeria for even our industry, the hair and wig, um, synthetic hair and human hair wig making. We have a standard mm -hmm. and it's a very good standard that when you go through the process, you can, re you can easily get your certification if it meets that standard. So at, in that regard, that has already been done. It is now the willingness of the players in that space and other spaces to say, okay, since I want an international standard, let me go through the process of making my products meet up to that expectation. And gradually, people are beginning to move to that direction. For instance, if your product has an SON um, stamp on it, yes. you are qualified to be part of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You are qualified to ship products for free. Um, to certain countries without, I mean, duties and all that that usually they are usually charged on shipping. Those are some of the things that the government has done to entice and to encourage small businesses to look at producing their products in such a way that wherever it lands in the world, you can pick it up and say, oh yes, this is a good product. Okay, fine. Let's talk about um, your particular sector, which is the hair and uh, wig manufacturing. A whole lot um, is really happening um, in that sector. The last time we talked, you talked about how you know, Nigerians can actually do these things better than, oh, yes. you know, uh, from those um, in on the Asian countries. How is the industry right now? And um, are we really catching up with the recent tide? Yes, the industry, it's actually growing. And the Nigerian, um, Nigeria as a country has done quite well in the braided wig industry. For your wig to look for your wig to be acceptable, if you, if you, I mean, if you're walking on the street and someone stops you and says, hey, I love your wig, I bet you got it from Nigeria. And you say, oh yes, I got it from Nigeria. Nigeria speaks quality oh, wow. when it comes to braided wigs. Wow. Yes, anywhere you go, this, if it looks good, oh, it's gotta be from Nigeria. That's, That's what you thing. hear, it's a beautiful thing. But what we also want to be able to do is to also insist on that same standard and quality here in Nigeria. Because we have millions of people who actually need this product here, mm -hmm. but because of you know the lack of standardization, so to speak, we are not able to give that much quality mm -hmm. back home. Mm -hmm. So we want a situation whereby everyone who is in this industry knows that this is how this should be. If we are making a twist, let it be a twist. If it's a braid, let it be a braid. Such that when everybody starts to do it, anywhere you find yourself, as long as you are in Nigeria, you, you already know that this is how it should look. It's just like tie and dye. Yeah. You have to follow the process of it. You can't be creative. You have to tie it. You have to dye it. You have to let it oxidize. You have to let it go through that process. Yes, so that it can come out looking exactly like it what should it be. should be. Yeah. So that is where we are going to right now in terms of standardization. And that's why at our training center, we teach that. What we teach is this is how it should be. And a lot of them are like, oh, it looks like I'm learning this work all over again. We have people that have been practicing for 15 years, 20 years, and like they feel like they are going back in time to learn it all over again because of the insistence on the quality. All right. So yes. st let's stay with um, your industry for a bit. Uh, remember the last time, uh, last year specifically, that I covered some events that um, you brought in ladies together uh, for some competition. Yes, and it, 120 minutes head So challenge. how's that really going? So, oh. Yes, that went very well and yeah. it's going very well so far. We had the winners, top three. Okay. We invested in training them and yeah. then training some of their workers okay. in their various um, businesses. Yeah. And the patronage they have received so far yeah. has been very, very good. The clientele they are able to interact with, yeah. they have better clients right now because they are able to say, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what it should okay. look like. They've got, there's this confidence they now have, you know, being proud that, oh, I'm in the hair industry, I'm yeah. a stylist, I'm a professional beautician, and all that. So that has given their business a boost. Mm. And I'm happy to say that all, at least all of them, the top three that yeah. are taking part, and even the other ones, are now shipping abroad. 
that's yeah, that's good. That's, that's, that's what we should be even talking about. So when we uh, grow these product and services, so we should make them have an international outlook where exactly. Nigeria would actually be a hub. You know, that's what we want to see happening in the country. But still on that capacity building, that was a one-off that you had and a lot of people benefited. What's the essence or what's the place of capacity building in uh, maybe not just your industry, but uh, for local manufacturers, uh, local uh, service providers? Don't you think that should be emphasized upon? Oh, yes, it should be emphasized upon. It's really, really important because... COVID-19 and even the fluctuations in the forest, rate, you know, the forest rates has taught us a lot. I mean, there were lots of things, there were raw materials that needed to come in, but because of COVID, a lot of us, particularly in our industry, we didn't have access to raw materials. We had to be creative. We had to find a way to start making some of these things we buy abroad here in Nigeria. And that in its own has grown a separate market in that industry. So it's an area where everybody, all the local manufacturers, need to have as much skill as possible because we do not even have the capacity to produce for the usage of our popul country's population, not to talk about producing for the whole world. But the more trained, the more technical expertise that exists in the hands of these um, small businesses and the local producers, the better our chances at you know, scaling and selling to the whole world. So it's extremely important, it's okay. very needed. In passing, you mentioned um, Forex. A whole lot of people are complaining about um, the nation's um, Forex regime and how it has impacted negatively most of the times on their you know, service and even their product. So walk us through uh, what the impact of um, this uh, Forex regime has been on, you know, your own um, industry? Well, we are smiling in our smiling. industry because we sell abroad. Okay, wow. And um, what I would encourage to happen will be, you know, more access to be created. Mm. There's an engine we are working on that should be able to house as many braiders and her companies, small businesses in the industry that would give them the capacity to produce here and also sell abroad. Mm -hmm. There are lots of um, regulations, standardization. There's a lot in that process that a lot of my people don't want to go through that stress, mm -hmm. not because they don't want to. Mm -hmm. Most of them are not able to because they don't have the time and they don't have the technical expertise True. to successfully get to that level, yes. which is where we want to come in mm. and also encourage the government to play as well. Mm. So, but in terms of the raw materials, yes, it's been difficult because most of our raw materials come from China, Vietnam, mm. in terms of the base material. Okay. For the braiding hair, it's beautiful. We have They're that sourced in Nigeria. locally? Yes, they are all okay. sourced locally, but the base hair, in terms of what we are, you know, making these hairs mm. on, okay. and the, like the wigs, the full lace wigs, mm. the other lace materials, are mostly sourced from abroad. Okay. So that has been a bit, um, it has raised the price because the rates, the more the rates go up, the more expensive it gets for us. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, lots of, um, they are now altern alternative. We now have, some people now have the skill of making this less materials here in Nigeria. Oh, wow. So we are not so pressed so for there's it. an entire value chain. Really. There's an entire value chain. And that's COVID, you know, pushed that out. Mm. And we were no longer, when we knew we couldn't import anymore, we had to find, you know, ways. we had to find ways to get those things done. And mm. a lot of people have grown the scale of, it's called ventilating. Oh, wow. And that has now made a different industry and has created its own employment in that value chain, mm. wherein that can also serve the braided wig industry. All right. Mm -hmm. You're still watching Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Angela is still here with us, but we'll take a quick break and return with more. Don't go away. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. And Angela Iekosi is still with us in the house. Thanks for staying with us, I'm Angela. Thank you. All right, fine. A whole lot you have said concerning uh, made in Nigeria small scale uh, businesses and startups. But uh, 
one key challenge I see is that of um, packaging and marketing. Maybe that's why uh, the ones that produced abroad, you know, enjoy more patronage because of what the eyes can Very see. Correct. What do you do? What do you think we can do? What's the way forward? How do we begin to change that narrative? Well, the first will be enlightenment, trying to enlighten our people that when something looks good, it's easier to be petrified, it's easier, it's easier to be bought. Mm. So that is also part of what our training entails. We teach them packaging, we teach them branding, we teach them finishing. So that is very, very important. And at the end of the day, when they see these things, they, they, they are, they, it's like some scales fell off their eyes. They are like, oh, I never knew my product would look this good. I didn't mm. know this was what I produced. Mm. So because of the packaging involved. So we, we have to do a lot of enlightenment. We have to, you know, and which the organizations, um, government organizations are also pushing, the standards organizations of Nigeria. Mm. They have specifications on how the finished product should look like. So that awareness is important. The minute we are, and if, if the good thing is that every packaging material you need can actually be it's sourced so here. Mm. Every pack, all our packaging materials are sourced here. In fact, they are, we have gotten to the point where we are now giving packaging materials to companies abroad. They found out that, oh, it's better to do it in Nigeria. It's cheaper and it's faster and everything. So mm. it's, it's, we are becoming cheaper than, than China. So Where that's, yes, yes. So that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a plus. So if our people are enlightened that this is how a finished product should look like, mm. it's to enjoy more patronage. patronage. It creates that experience like, oh, I have something beautiful. Mm. So I think enlightenment well, is very key. The okay. more people know about it, the better they, 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 the more they will change and the more the better products will come out. On the final note now, Angela, in terms of um, government's intervention, what specific areas would you want to see changes? Well, for government's intervention, there's a lot the government can do. One of the things they can do is bringing in the technical expertise. Mm. Now, while we are promoting made in Nigeria products, we know that there is actually no made by Nigerians or, made or owned by Nigerian products. Mm. The biggest manufacturing products in Nigeria right now are owned by foreigners. So if we say we want made in Nigeria products, we actually don't have, they're not owned by Nigerians. They're not, they might be partly made by Nigerians, but they are not owned by Nigerians and mm. it's not complete. So if the government can assist in getting the technical ex expertise to train Nigerians to know how to do these things in that standard, that would help. Yeah. And then also, it's also good for the government to take part in what's in, in partnerships. Like if, for instance, the government has a specific partnership with India to say, yeah. okay, give us your hair. So that when we have this hair in bulk in Nigeria. We're going to save shipping costs. We're going to save a lot of things. They buy it in both of us. We just go there and buy and produce. Mm. So partnership with these countries like India, Taiwan, China, that can that have the technical expertise and the raw materials will go a long way in making our industry very, very appealing. And we just hope we begin to see all those changes that we have talked about. Thank you so no, much, so Angela, so for your time. Thank you. All right. Angela Ayekosi is the co-founder of the Confident Black Woman and CEO Blacks or uh, Black Blondes and Brunettes. She joined us to talk about how we can actually move and scale up local production here in Nigeria. That's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.